Now let's take a look at the overall results of all these optimizations that we did. So now I'm going to replot things differently as speed up. And here was the first we started out with, where we just replaced the call to update with update OpenCL, had everything in the inner loop. And you see on the CPU, we got a 1.1% speed up on the GPU 1.3. Then we added profiling, didn't really change much. Now we added profiling with the finish in there so that we could get the correct values, and that we don't expect to change anything. The first real optimization we did was to move the overhead outside of the loop. And we did that, we saw that our speed ups increased enormously. Now on our four CPUs, we're running about 2.2 times faster, and our GPU about 3.6 times faster. We then went and did an optimization. We put the range into a kernel, and we saw that that sped up on the CPU, but it slowed us down on the GPU. Finally, we coalesced the range axis, didn't change the CPU performance. That's because the CPU has a big cache, so it doesn't care if the axes are coalesced or not. But it sped up the GPU performance enormously. And in the end, by doing these optimizations, we got about 11x speed up from our GPU. And that's a very reasonable speed up for a GPU. Now, if we cheat and we look at just the computation part, so ignoring all of the compilation and setup and initialization and data transfers, we see a very different picture here. So we can see that when we did our first optimization, the compute was running six times faster. And if we went in and look at just the compute part, we're nearly 20 times faster. But of course, this 20 times faster is not the value we really get. We're only running 11 times faster wall clock time because we're just looking at the compute part here. We can't trust this part over here with the baseline for profiling because it was, remember, looking at asynchronous commands. So that wasn't a good value. What if we look on other devices? So here's our first version for OpenCL with profiling. And this is running under OS X with an AMD device and a Sandy Bridge. Here we're running under Linux with an NVIDIA device and an Halem processor. And what we see here is that they're very different. We notice two things immediately. The overhead for the Linux NVIDIA drivers was far, far higher than the overhead on the Mac. In fact, it was so high that it slowed things down. It took eight seconds to just start up on those devices. And if you're running for several hours, that doesn't matter, but if you're running a short program, that does matter. The other thing we notice is compilation. This, remember, was having the compilation inside the loop, so the worst possible compilation. And if you look at the difference here, the NVIDIA drivers on Linux spent enormously longer compiling than the Mac drivers, and this is because the Mac version ca caches code. So it only had to do the high-level compilation once, and so it was much faster doing the compilation. Now, if we look at our final results, they look pretty similar. We got roughly similar orders of magnitude speed up in both cases, but on the NVIDIA Linux, the overhead was killing us. So you need to run for a much longer time to amortize that overhead. If we look at just the compute performance, what you see here is that the machine here was much faster. The CPUs were a lot faster and the GPU was enormously faster. And so if you keep stuff just on the devices, they are a lot faster. But remember, the overall wall clock time, including all the transfers back and forth, is not as good. So what did you learn that was most important out of doing these things? So to go through that, I think they're all pretty important. You've got to start out measuring performance. And it's tricky if it's asynchronous. So you need to measure the performance in order to know where to optimize. We saw that moving data is very expensive. We had this transferring data back and forth, and when we eliminated that, it sped things up a lot. And finally, memory optimizations are essential. We saw that by doing the coalescing, it made a huge difference in the performance that we had. We also noticed that this limited synchronization was difficult. It would have been nice if we had a good way to do all of the min-max on the device and, in fact, control the whole program and not have to send data back, but that wasn't supported through the OpenCL we were working with.